very glad to be here. Um, innovation is a subject that Havas um, hold very dear to our heart. Um, I'm hoping that um, I will give some clarity through chaos. I was asked yesterday at a conference, um, did it, was chaos and confusion that is my world, is that still fun or is that um, a pain in the arse? Um, and the reality is it's the reason that an agency exists, right? Um, we are here to navigate through everything that's going on, whether um, a brand should invest in anything through from ITV to Facebook to anything in between. So our job is to navigate um, confusion and chaos. So what I'm going to talk about um, briefly to hopefully set up the rest of the session is uh, the Havas belief that the way forward is to stop thinking about just serving mindlessly adverts across the internet. And serving is a word used to, um, to kind of illustrate the fact that technology makes a decision about an ad being served um, and start to move to thinking about how we serve people's needs um, because the internet provides us with huge amount of signals and information and data about what people do want so they should enable us as advertisers and as brands to put the right type of content whether that's utility entertainment information in front of people but I would argue that today there are a lot of people failing in that space. So mattering to people as a brand has never been more important than today. Havas runs a global study um, across um, around 140,000 people um, that looks at how meaningful brands are to people. There's lots of surveys out there like Interbrand that look at brand equity and brand value, uh, which is important. But we look at whether brands matter to people based on three metrics. One is kind of are your products fairly priced? Are they good products? But the two important ones are personal well-being. Do they improve my life? Um, do they help me connect with my friends? Do they help me with self-esteem, et cetera, et cetera? And collective well-being. So do they help the people around me? Do they help society, the environment, the community that I exist within? And the rather scary statistic is that 74% of brands, people wouldn't care about them disappearing tomorrow. So three-quarters of brands in this country, brands could disappear and most people wouldn't care. Actually, only 28% of brands in the UK are considered to notably improve our quality of lives. Um, so again, a rather damning statistic that only just over a quarter of brands are doing that. And people do genuinely, from the study that we've done, want brands to improve their daily lives. Brands are an essential part of the fabric of culture. Um, they inform, they entertain, they provide kind of experiences as well as selling products and services. And I think the world of just flogging products and services um, from a brand perspective is fast dying. Um, we were having a chat just before um, we came in the room and saying that interrupted marketing is dead, yet the vast majority of brands still continue to interrupt as opposed to think about how to consider whether to serve an ad. The internet has lots of little boxes, whether they're 468 by 60 or bigger, you can serve an ad into. The decision should be whether to serve an ad based on whether you know that customer, uh, whether that customer interacts or engages or transacts with you already, or whether they don't. The vast majority of the time, an ad is always served into that space because somebody somewhere is trying to monetize the system. And I would argue that, that there's a massive oversupply of inventory, so we need to think more smartly about how to build engagement and experiences between brands and customers. So interestingly, the most meaningful brand in the UK study was actually Amazon. Who's surprised about that? Okay, nobody's put their hand up, which is unusual. But Amazon, arguably you'd argue, tax evasion, staff welfare in their kind of depots, you'd argue that's not a very meaningful brand. But what they provide is a customer experience, Amazon Prime delivery with one hour in London, probably 24 hours around the rest of the, the rest of the UK. They provide a better frictionless customer experience than anyone else can. And 75% of people actually say, I couldn't, I couldn't live with Amazon in my life. You ask the same question of another tax evader, Starbucks, and only 27% of people said that they care. Why? Because I can go to Costa, I can go to Pret a Manger, I can go to Starbucks, I can go to, sorry, Starbucks was the example, I can go to anywhere else to get the same, pretty much the same product. So there's an argument there that says customer experience is actually much more in, important than legacy brand equity. And you know this, but obviously we spend hours and days kind of thinking about the fact that the way people access and discover con content is constantly changing. We're almost seeing the platformization of everything. They're almost with the likes of Facebook and YouTube and um, kind of Google and others thinking about themselves almost as a cinema where a studio film is shown, whereas other people thinking about how they create content, so actually becoming a studio, you're almost seeing a differentiation between the people that in the entertainment industry create content versus the people that show it. 
Um, and platforms like Facebook and Snapchat are constantly playing around with that ecosystem and thinking about, do I create content or do I just enable it to be delivered to my audiences? And clearly those, those platforms have huge reach today, um, which I'll show you in a second. There's also a massive wake-up call for the industry in the last um, few months. Firstly, ad blocking. Um, the fact that actually a lot of consumers will consider that they'll put an ad blocker onto their phone to stop advertising being served. It's a wake-up call. If an ad interrupts my experience, makes the content load slower, and actually makes my mobile monthly bill cost me more, then why wouldn't people actually kind of download an ad blocker unless there's a valuable experience being delivered by that brand? You probably can't see that because it's very small, but on the right-hand side is some data from Nielsen from the last couple of weeks which shows that trust in editorial content, um, in TV and print, has actually dropped year on year. And actually some of the things that are going up <coughs> is mobile and other influencers like people that are on Instagram or YouTube that are pushing content out there. So we are seeing a world where paid media, just putting interruptive advertising in front of, media, in, in front of people, is being tipped on its head. And the Havas model is to start thinking about own channels, so the channels that you own, your websites, your stores, um, use your own customer data, earn channels, which is social media, uh, places where your audience can actually become the media for you. If they love you, if they like what you do, they will talk about you. That is much more organic and much more authentic than you telling someone through a paid, avatar, paid advert um, that they should interact with you. Shared is about working with other brands to actually amplify your message. So we work for, with EA and Disney. We're bringing EA and Disney together to go with Star Wars Battlefront. You should think about how to mix your kind of own marketing channels to push that out there. Uh, we work with the BBC. They have 60% reach of the UK population through their own channels. Why would they need to go and start spending on lots of paid advertising? So thinking this way around, owned, earned, shared, paid rather than paid first, I think is a fundamental tipping on the head of the model. And what does that mean? It means that potentially the share prices of the likes of ITV... Um, who are doing exceptionally well because they've diversified out of advertising into selling IP um, and into actually kind of creating content through their own studios, they are going to struggle in a world that goes forward unless they can find a way to navigate that. Agencies like mine are actually more in the business of building and designing meaningful experiences than they are in buying media. So I was introduced as a media buyer. I don't like being a media buyer because I don't think that's what we do today. I believe what we do is actually try to work out how to build rich experiences between people and brands so that they, over time, have a sustainable relationship that can turn into values. And our answer to this is bringing together the intersection of data and content. So data is the platform for understanding where the valuable attention is. So is the valuable attention actually in TV or is it on the second screen that I'm kind of tweeting from or I'm looking at other content from? Where is the actual value of that attention? So should I be spending more money on putting 30-second ads onto ITV or should I put, be putting more money into social channels or into the mobile kind of platform where people are actually much closer uh, to my brand? And content for us is a very broad term about the experience that a brand puts in front of people to deliver that meaningful interaction to then prompt some form of action. Action could be sharing on social media, like you're being shown here. Action could be to go and buy something. It's very rare people go and buy immediately, but increasingly the friction is being taken out of the system. We were just talking about videos where you can actually shop from within them. So we just created a piece of work for an online retailer uh, where we have re-recorded a classic tune, DJ's summertime uh, kind of tune, with Rizzle Kicks, created that video, entertaining, informing, branded content, but we've allowed people to actually buy the clothing that's all um, purchasable on very.co.uk from the video. So a very different way of looking at running an ad to say, go and buy from us, showing a piece of content that actually is music content and allowing people to buy from it is a very different way of thinking um, of advertising. Now, even in the most traditional of media channels, TV, the likes of Netflix are using both data and content to win. So they already understand that it takes two or three episodes for you to watch before you get hooked to a series. So they don't just allow you to... They don't, they don't think about you have to wait another week for the second episode. They allow you to get all of it kind of on demand when you want it. And that's because they're smartly using data to inform their content. When they started as a business, they actually put data out kind of publicly into the, into the web and asked people to tell them who their favourite kind of directors were and which content they wanted, and they encouraged them to help build some algorithms that would then inform that. That
that whole model informs the type of content they produce. ITV doesn't do that. ITV sticks with the same talent that's delivered year on year on year and does more of that. And actually, if you look at something like Disney, Disney is going back to make more and more sequels of the things that they've made for the last five to ten years that works, rather than thinking about what's going to succeed. Some of their bigger investments into new franchises have been utter failures. And I think that's because they don't think about how does data inform our decisions on content. There are also new media, cha media channels in town for a younger audience that deliver more scale than television. So Cameron Dallas, Zoella, Josh Peck are all Instagrammers, YouTubers, kind of Viners that have massive followings. You can see the numbers there. And when you compare that to some of the programs that actually a millennial audience, so a younger 18 to 34 audience will watch, Made in Chelsea, X Factor, which is declining hugely year on year. There are less people watching it. You can see that there's different types of attention going to different parts of the spectrum. And yet, TV is still in very robust health. Um, TV in the UK, um, you could argue, is underpenetrated versus the US. There's less minutage of advertising, um, and it's a smaller percentage of overall ad spend. But I believe that it's inevitable that that starts to shift because it's based on a panel of 5,000 homes with Bob as opposed to on genuine behavioural data coming from digital where you understand a much wider kind of scale of what the audience are doing. And the Havas view of the world is that you need to use data and content in harmony. So you need to understand the audience, collect data at every single touch point, analyse that for insight and make it actionable, connect that with other data sets so that you can then make it rich, and then you feed that into planning, create creation of content that just flies itself organically without you having to pay money for that. So people will share good content. Then target that content to relevant audiences and amplify it lastly with paid media. Now, the right-hand side is media agencies. The left-hand side is creative agencies today. They're completely separate ecosystems and have been for the last two decades once they split. They have to come back together. Havas is building villages to bring those back together, but in a new way, not in a full-service model that existed before, but in a way that we bring together smart kind of insight people, smart data scientists, media planners, creatives, designers, developers, all around one table to, to actually seize this opportunity because there's too, much, there's too much of a gap between media, automation of media, and the development of content. So you can't satisfy a consumer need quickly enough because um, the process is far too disconnected today. So the way that I would argue any brand needs to start to think is how to collect and organise their data. Use quantitative data to measure the user behaviour, then start to capture qualitative data to get more granular insights, integrate that with many other data sources. So there are lots of businesses that allow, allow you to buy that data, whether it's Experian, Sky IQ, O2's Weave Business. You can connect all that data into your own data to then inform where the audience that you want is actually to be found, as opposed to... data to prove where the audiences are and where the valuable attention is, so why aren't advertisers using that? <coughs> and my view is that we are moving very fast to a world where digital services and experiences delivered via forms of connected devices, not just the smartphone, but wearable technology, kind of fridges and kind of other devices in the home that have connect connections to them, will increasingly start to feed out new sources of data. So today we have transactional data, we have browser data, mobile devices are giving us location data, so where do you spend your time? I know where your home is, I know where you shop, I know how long it takes you to get to work. We're now going to start to, with devices like this, start to get emotional data and start to get a lot more kind of personal data. So that data, and actually crowd emotion, we'll talk later about how important that emotional data is, will increasingly allow us to think about how to then seed the right messages to people at the right time. And I believe that the social sphere is not just about recommendation and advocacy. I believe it's about mass distribution. So Facebook um, has, has a billion, billions of audiences using it already. And it's also about customer relationship management. But social becomes this piece that connects together the experience. And then on the outside, the, the evolving part of the ecosystem, artificial intelligence, whether it's Cortana from Microsoft, whether it's Siri from Apple, or Facebook's Messenger product, increasingly artificial intelligence will start to play a role in ensuring that brands come into people's lives at the right time. They bubble up to provide value 
interesting information services that are needed as opposed to interrupting their world and actually force feeding stuff down their throats. And I do believe we're at a tipping point where this is all starting to change. Many brands don't get it. Many brands are siloed between brand, marketing, digital, e-commerce, insight, and horizontally, both in agencies and in brands, we need to connect that conversation back together if we are to serve people's needs and to stop consumers turning advertising off. Because advertising is not a bad thing. People like advertising. They like brands if brands provide value to their lives. So that is the end of my presentation. Thank you.